Welcome to Sustainable Packaging with Corey Connors. Today's guest is someone I've been looking forward to interviewing for quite some time, Mr. Mikey Pasciuto. He's the co-founder of Scrap Recycling. Hey, Mikey. Hey, Corey. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here and excited to talk shop. Yeah, man. You guys are doing great things out there in the recycling space and, well, in the, I should say, in the environmental, environmentally friendly, sustainable packaging, all of these spaces that we're in. And we really appreciate it. So of course, tell us about your, your background first, just you, and then we'll talk about scrap. Sure. So uh, me personally, so I have a very, I'd, I'd call it a weird background. So I grew <laughs> up in a job shop manufacturing. So my background's actually in like CNC machining and quality control inspection. So wow. I know how to hold like 50 <laughs> millionths of an inch and like yeah. inspect those parts. I've also inspected, like I've inspected like aer aerospace, mechanical heart parts, manufactured them. So like I've done really precise work and now it's cool that I get to work with like cardboard boxes and plastics <laughs> and things that like obviously have their own precision but it's quite yeah. nice that it's not as like you're sweating trying to hold the top and then i went to college for mechanical engineering and sustainability i have a dual degree and my minors in sustainable energy so i'm focused actually totally on power systems that's where like my specialty uh, lies but in college basically it kind of ties into like scrap is we basically entered a competition solve a problem on campus and it was contaminated waste in our recycling dumpsters because UNH right. is a platinum rated campus for their sustainability and they do phenomenal work but recycling is just so hard for them it's like the best sustainability school in the country is struggling with this how are other universities matching up and which school which issues. school was that Mikey University of New Hampshire oh New Hampshire okay right on I didn't know that they were the number one school in sustainability. That's their amazing. number five, actually, oh. but like they're up there. They're like one of five with stars <laughs> platinum. Well, that's excellent. That five out of uh, hundreds or thousands is a really good number. Oh, it's no small feat. The sustainability yeah. part department there is one of a kind. They're great. Excellent. So then you got, it, there was a contest on campus and you guys entered with this idea and it's, and now it's coming to fruition. Can you, can you tell us about Scrap? What, it, what is it? Sure. So basically what Scrap is a platform that's dedicated to making recycling simple. So what you're probably most familiar with is our mobile app. So like, that's like our flagship product. And I kind of call it a Trojan horse, not because like there's something evil inside of it, but because yeah. it really shelters the technology that can be scalable and brought anywhere. And the app is just the best way to visualize that. So basically what Scrap does is you can scan the barcode on a product and it will tell you if it's recyclable or not based on your location and also based on what's in front of you. And there's a whole bunch of backend stuff that goes on, but basically like just because PET is accepted doesn't mean PET trays are accepted, but PET bottles might. And there's yeah. a lot of moving parts. So we have a backend system that's patent pending in the US that basically will um, identify what's recyclable specifically in your location. So That's amazing. And this is, this is one of the biggest questions or problems I would run into in all of these interviews and all of my conversations with customers is how do we tell our consumers what to do with our packaging when they're done with it? And I think this solves that problem. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to, we, we started actually with a smart bin idea that would like scan and detect. And frankly, we're in way over our heads because that's like master's PhD level AI and yeah. analytics, not to mention millions. But then we thought, well, not everybody's going to have access to this crazy equipment. Some towns don't have the budget. So we wanted something that was accessible to the consumer because consumers genuinely like, like really, really care about this issue, yeah. but they just felt like they didn't have the right resources in their hands to act properly. And that's where we really just stepped in and we we're like, let's try a mobile app that's free because everybody has a smartphone at this day and age. Yeah. Well, it's, you're exactly right. And that's what people are using. And eventually you won't have... I just found out Apple's trying to replace our driver's license with a, a, a picture on our cell phone now. The, you know, things like that. Are, are, are we getting rid of total physical cards and, and things like that? It's really cool. Yeah, no. And I think Massachusetts would be upset because I just got through this whole process of getting a real <laughs> ID so I can use it to travel to the Canadian border in Mexico as well. And they just went through all that work. And Apple, of course, capitalism at its finest company comes in and just totally reinvents the wheel. Yeah. yeah, I did too. It took me months to get my real ID. It's such a such a mess, but you know, whatever. We'll, we'll move forward and we'll be part of the, the solution. So who came up with the idea for Scrap? You and, and your classmates? Anybody else in, involved? Yeah, so there's five basically directors. So three of us were the co-founders back in the day. So 
the two other co-founders are actually from the United Kingdom. Ev's from Wales, and then Dan's like a proper Britishman or Englishman. Yeah. They were actually on study abroad in the United States when I met them. And I recognized the accent because I studied abroad in New Zealand in my undergrad. And oh, wow. I drove on the wrong side of the road. And I was like, it took me a <laughs> while to get back used to it to the United States. Not to mention, if you're driving a mass in New Hampshire, I think everybody knows the reputation of a Massachusetts driver. I am one of them. Uh, I wasn't letting these guys go on the road by themselves. I said, look, if you guys want a little bit of American culture, like I have a convertible. So I was like, that's the most American car ever. I was like, I'll take you guys for a ride. We'll go have fun. And so basically we just bonded and the three of us to like really put this idea together. And like, we had the idea, like you can have an app, scan the barcode, get recycling guidance. None of us are computer scientists, but my high school physics, par physics partner, Scarfo, him and his roommate were like amazing computer science, 4.0 GPAs out of Wentworth, really smart dudes. Wow. They hopped in, joined us. And that's kind of how the idea came to life. So like I contributed a lot of like the back end in terms of like how we handle shapes and materials, the guidance and how they interlay dance, the marketing and like product design, Thomas and John purely coding, Ev does our books, sustainability with me as well. And we, it's, it's really just a team effort. Like none of one of us could say it's one, our idea or it's one of our ideas. It like the patent has all five of our names on it because oh, I love not, that. like we couldn't write the patent ourselves. Like obviously it's a legal firm, but all five of us had to contribute to that document because not yep. one person knows how the whole system works. What a cool story. And if you guys, if this thing scales, like we hope it will, uh, it, I, I can't wait to read your book someday. It's going to be wonderful. Well, I, I wish, honestly, I'm a math guy. So someone's going to have to help me write that, but I appreciate the, yeah. the compliment. <laughs> well, they'll interview you at least, right? Yeah, there we go. I can talk all day. I got the gift of gab, but that's about it. And how, how long ago was the impetus for this? Is this what's, where are we at on the timeline of scrap? I was in my fourth year of college out of five. So oh God, it, th since 2020 happened, it's a blur. September okay. of 2019 was basically, we got, we were invited to exhibit at the EPA America Recycles Fair. And this was when, God, pardon me for forgetting his name, but it was Trump's EPA director. He, <laughs> what, that was when he unveiled the 50 by 30 campaign. Okay. And that's when we were like, we got knocked out of the competition we entered, but we were invited there and we we're like, oh, this is a serious issue. Like there's three kids in college and like UNH polos looking at Nestle, the likes of Nestle, these like multi-million dollar sorting companies like, okay, this is much more serious than we thought. This isn't just like putting it in the right bin. So oh, it really yeah. like, it grew from there. And then we've all been full time on it. Like we all quit our jobs and dove into this January 1st of this year. Oh man. Good for you. I, I can't wait to promote this with you. And so, thanks for promoting it. Tell, tell us about the app. It's, you said it's, it's, I'm amazed to hear this, but it's free. Yes, it's completely free. So uh, when you think about it, would anybody actually pay for a recycling app? <laughs> I would. Well, you would. <laughs> okay, you and I definitely would. But like the average person on the street, absolutely not. And they shouldn't have to. Like they didn't ask for a plastic bottle. They asked for Coca-Cola. Right. It's actually this trending thing in sustainability where it's like, in reality, a lot of us, we say we're selling products, but we're actually selling a service. Like yeah. when you want, when you're drinking a Coke, you want like the taste of Coca-Cola. Like that's the service you get. It just happens to come through a product. Right. So in reality, like the bottle isn't their responsibility. Obviously they have to do their part because like it's in your hands, like please put it in the right spot. But we can't necessarily bill consumers for packaging they didn't choose. Right. So that's why we don't really charge consumers. We charge municipalities for like our data insights, the ability to send notifications to the phones, so on and so forth as like right. a platform as a whole. But in terms of the base app is free because we wanted this to work in countries like Nigeria that are developing nations and highly sophisticated countries that might not want to really be bothered with recycling like the United States or places like Europe and the UK, which are like really like good on recycling. I think the UK's average risk national recycling rates like between 53 and 64%, depending on which part of the UK. So wow. we wanted this to work anywhere. Like if you give us the guidance and give us the capital to back the servers, this can be deployed anywhere in the world at any time. That's amazing. And to give some perspective to the audience for, for what the number you just said, my understanding is in the USA, our recycle rates are about 38%. Would you, would you agree with that number? Yes. I I've seen 34% floated around, but it, it also, it depends where you are. Like, and it also right. depends on the stream. Uh, there's a there's a town, one of our advisors is from, he was a paper mill guy. Uh, he's from Swampscott. Their contamination rates 
38% right now, between 30 and 38%. And then there's a couple of towns over that's at 8%. So like, even if the national average is this, it's such a location-based issue. Like as in sustainability, we always say, like think global act. It's such a location-based issue that like, I could say the average recycling rate's this, but it's so different in one spot. But 100%. yeah, 30, 30. For thirty-eight percent for the U.S. Yeah, and and to be clear, that's that's amongst all materials, kind of an amortization of packaging in general, post-consumer packaging materials. So when you say corrugate, a lot of times you'll say uh, that's recycled at a rate of of seventy to ninety percent. Mm-hmm. Some of those numbers. When you say plastic, the number is always in the 30% low aluminum I've heard is upwards of 60%, whereas glass is down in the 40% range. But I interviewed their global or their head of national, and he is said they're planning on uh, getting it up to 50% in the next five to 10 years. Hmm. And they actually have a plan to do that. So he's, he was really excited about that. Yeah, I was listening to that. Actually, I was listening to that episode uh, right after you reached out. And it was actually really interesting because personally, like I, I'm a big like proponent of like understanding like forever chemicals. So I used to work with like oil all the time. So I was very precarious about like, okay, what's on my skin? Because like sometimes you get oil on your skin, you get a rash, whatever. It happens. It's part of the manufacturing business. But yeah. like the only reason I love glass is like packaging. Granted, it is heavy and it does shatter. But if it's separated in its own stream, infinitely yep. recyclable and it's inert medically it does unless it like you drink from a cracked glass you're not going to worry about health effects and that's <laughs> just a beautiful thing like i think that's really great in terms of like what we can look at as an industry like, i think glass i was not paid by any glass spokesman but like just as a yep. material type infinitely recyclable and it's so easily identifiable by a consumer if it has yep. its own stream it doesn't cause problems for paper or anything so I'm, paper and glass are like my bread and butter and metals as well Plastics is where I personally struggle as a person to like identify. And if I don't know, how do some people know? <laughs> and when, and it's, when it's you and I who are studying this daily, we're not sure it, it becomes obvious that, that those other materials are, are more, I, I think they just have more recycling legs, I should say. Mm, of course. Uh, but I think that the future holds a lot of positive for, mm. for polymer materials because of things like, let's say, Sprite that moved away from a green container to a clear container. Now, that's much more recyclable. That's mm-hmm. easy, easier to recycle. And it's uh, now it's number one PET, where it used to be number one PET, but green, and that's not going to get recycled, probably, mm-hmm. or sorted. But anyways, we could go into the minutia all day. So let's talk about scrap how do companies get their products registered how do they work with you guys to to make sure they're on the app so it's actually like we made that as easy of a process as possible just shoot me an email i (laughs) what basically all i have to do is i say great give me your product line so they give me we need your gtin or upc barcode like it can't just be a custom sku you 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 like edit out because like somebody I, I there that's not regulated so we could get duplicate records of the same SKU but GTINs and UPCs there's no duplicate record so as long as that's your product product line is based on that just tell us give us an image of the packaging image of what it is brand name product name barcode then all we need is like what the packaging is and what materials it is uh, and you don't have to put it like in our system. You can just tell me, hey, this is a bottle and it's got like the mixed material sleeve or wrap type, not a sticky label type. And I can take it from there. We don't want them to like have to learn the nuances of packaging because like <laughs> what I might call, uh, for example, in the UK, they just call like jugs, like a jug of laundry detergent. They call those bottles like they're still bottles. I call that a jug and they're right. very different in terms like, I mean, they're accepted together now, but they can be different. So basically a side over basically if you just send me that information i can get you in the app and we also do a really cool thing for sustainable businesses where if you give us a short description of your sustainable highlights as well as any symbols you have on your packaging because we know like symbols are confusing like i studied sustainability and there's certain sustainability symbols i look at and i'm like what is that what does that mean right like yeah. b corp like i love b corps they're great we're looking to become one not the av- the average person doesn't know what a benefit corporation is. But <laughs> if you're a benefit corporation and you submit your products, we attach the symbols to the product. So we can say this company is a B Corp, which translates into this, 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 this. And we also do like Peter Leaping Bunny. And like there's over like 60 symbols we can accommodate. So you can actually display and show off your sustainability stuff. So as people shop, 
they can see, okay, one, their packaging is really recyclable. And two, they're doing really great sustainability initiatives. I feel comfortable buying this product. So it's almost like a point of purchase and point of disposal. As a company, we really engage in that whole spectrum. But once it's disposed wow. of and once it's like on the shelf, then we're, we're in our ballpark. But outside of that, not really. That's amazing. Do you think someday that a company could like, let's say the consumer scans it, could they also offer a discount code to purchase more? So that becomes a like an added value for using mm -hmm. scrap, right? Yeah. So we actually, so in our beta, we had a rewards program, but awesome. through that, we found 96% of people. So we gave two options, donate <laughs> your points to charity, redeem yeah. a discount code. 96% of people went to the charity because in reality, when it comes to redeeming discount codes for a specific product, yeah. you have to interact with the app more. We're a utility-based tool. So we see, we saw our engagement like hit the floor when our beta, we're like, what are we doing wrong? Did, did we do this wrong? <laughs> but in reality, we didn't think of it like, what's the average person doing? If I have to throw something out here, I got a can right here. Yeah. I scan with one hand, I scan the can. I have something I want to get out of my hands and get away from the smelly trash or recycling bin. <laughs> I don't want to be bothered with a recycling app for too long. Right. So in reality, what we do now is we're actually revamping our rewards program again. Uh, it's a partnership I can announce at like a later time, just it's still early. Sure. Um, but basically you're able to choose from multiple causes. And through these causes, every time you scan, positive actions happen. And this can oh, be sponsored it. by brands. So what actually we found is people like the altruistic aspect of recycling. Because the thing was, is that people were recycling, they had no faith in the system. It's like, why do I care anymore? It's ending up in oceans. It's ending up in third developing nations, I should say. And yeah. it's ending up where it shouldn't be. So why does it matter which bin I put it in? But if you can say every time we, you scan something, something positive happens, even yeah. if the waste industry needs time to figure out where certain materials are going, something positive is happening from somebody, A, recycling, and B, learning how to recycle. That's and excellent. that's what we really aim for as like a rewards program. But we do actually have the ability to <laughs> identify like if a specific product was scanned, not by who though, because we don't want people, we don't want anybody to know who's scanning what, because that's like a privacy barrier. Right. So we actually, anybody who uses the app, you're completely anonymized. I don't even know who you are. So don't worry. I don't know what you're scanning. Wow. That's amazing. So you're not collecting that data, but that's excellent. Good for you. That's I know exactly really what was scanned, just not who did it. So we do right. know like a Coke can was recycled in Burlington, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't want to know whose house it was. I don't know who did, but we know, okay, so you can expect these types of things coming down in your stream and these questions that are coming up. Like if you have a ton of scanned cartons, you need a better like marketing pivoted at cartons. You don't just need to send blind flyers anymore. It's more targeted, focused recycling education. That's amazing. I, I serve on the board for a charity called Candle Lighters for Children with Cancer. Hmm. And so I'll, I'll have to go through your, your website and see if I could sign them up for, for some of your rewards. They're an amazing, amazing charity here in the Northwest. What we're doing for, if, if, if they're tied to a specific, specific municipality, when we partner with a municipality and we work for them, we actually do a, a specific reward or like cause for that municipality. So it could be for the local school system. So engagement directly goes back into the community. Cause really that's what uh. recycling is about. Cause we forget you recycle, right? Your municipality is saving money on its tax bill. They're not paying those contamination rates. So they right. have those funds now available to put back into the community. So like we're very much focused on having those local causes like the charity you're with yeah. focused on in the app. And we feel like that's such much more of a draw for what we're doing than monetary incentives for the time being. Oh, that's amazing. And, and that, that flows right into the question I was just going to ask you, how will this work with local governments to improve recycling rates? And it sounds like it will. That's what we're hoping. So we're hoping yeah. to do like, we just launched the app and it's like, First, like not beta, this is it. This is what we're doing like three weeks or two weeks ago now. But we've been looking for a community to pilot. So if there's communities out there that are looking to pilot, we're doing pilots now. So if you'd like to do it, that's totally on the table. And we're also hoping to have, so what would come with like this pilot and like working with communities is obviously, so the app engagement, like someone's not gonna be on the app 24 seven. That's not our goal. It's not that kind of app. It's a utility app, like I said earlier. But what we want is that it's an extra spot where no matter where you are, because if you click the app and you say, I changed locations, it'll find where you are and go, okay, here's your new set of rules. 
<laughs> there's never been one spot for people to refer to for recycling guidance before. It's always been fragmented. It's never been the same. But if everybody feeds us the guidance, everybody knows to go to scrap. So whenever now, okay, I have a recycling question, I go to scrap. I don't go on the town website or the town recycling website. I go to scrap. And then they can send notifications there as well. So now the municipality right. communicate a snowstorm. I, I'm sure you might, I get snowstorms all the time and 95 yeah. is shut down. They're like, we're not picking up trash today. It's delayed a day. You don't know until you know. And it's like, oh, the bin's still out there. Awkward. Yeah. So now they can just send <laughs> notifications more fi- efficiently. They can also identify if they get a lot of contaminants of a specific item, like a specific style. They can send notifications be like, hey, everybody in the scrap app, we don't take these items just so you know, or if the market changes and there's a freeze on glass because the, the refinery is shut down. Yeah. We're not taking glass for the next two weeks, throw it in the landfill, do this instead. And we also offer like bin specific guidance. So it's, we right. wanted to make a dynamic system for both communication and recycling education at the same time that all contributed to good. Man, this is awesome. I'm so excited for you guys and, and for what this could do for our, our world, not just Boston or not just, you know, your state, but the the whole USA and then the whole world. Well done. Yeah. So far we have guidance for entirety of New England plus like New York, Connecticut. Well, I guess Connecticut technically does count as New England besides Maine because Maine runs dirty MRFs quite frequently, which really? makes the guidance in the app a little bit tricky to, to write just because like if I'm telling people, hey, you can recycle this, just put it in the same bit as landfill. The point of the app kind of vanishes. Right. a little bit because it's a dirty murph so it's a little weird and for people in the audience that don't know what a dirty murph is they co-mingle their trash and recycling so that's why it's that. not available in maine but basically we're like if the guidance is given to me i have the gis boundaries set up for the entire united states so we if you give us the guidance we can the apps release in the u.s so I, as soon as you give me guidance the scrap will work fully functionally in your town that's amazing I know that Maine is, or was the first state to do extended producer responsibility Mm -hmm. and Oregon has since followed suit and I'm sure the rest of the country will follow shortly. Do you find, do you think that will affect what you're doing? Yes. And very positively because we have two data, we concern ourselves with two data sets. The reason why we don't concern ourselves with consumer data is because one privacy concerns, GDPR is very prevalent in Europe. They're much stricter than the United States. And because we have UK compatriots, we adhere to those standards as best as we can. And we're getting better and everything's anonymized. So we don't consumer concern ourselves with the consumer data. What we concern ourselves with is A, the recycling scheme data and B, the product data. Because if EPR is going to be calculated based off of acceptance, how widely accepted it is, refineries, what data might they want to use? Scraps data set to compute that. Because I know exactly, okay, no offense, Coca-Cola, you have three products. <laughs> the cap is recyclable when it's attached to the bottle and about 80% of municipalities, the cap isn't in the other 20. So you're going to have to pay a higher amount of EPR because it's not as widely accepted. Same with the wrapper, the sleeve. That wrapper sleeve, sure, it can be like be in the bin, but I'm pretty sure those don't get recycled. I know they're like, they're not a problem for the stream, but they get, when I'll get shredded, they get filtered out. So that's probably going to carry a landfill charge in the terms of EPR. So now we kind of have like this jump start. So when EPR oh, comes to effect like yeah. 2027, 2028, we have this whole packaging data set that's ready to go in terms of calculating EPR. Is it being accepted? Items being scanned? Okay that's actually being recognized as recyclable. And odds are, if somebody's scanning it with the app, they're going to put it in the right bin and we can actually <laughs> track it. So we can we track if you just want to know, you hit cancel and you're like, okay, I'm just learning, just figuring out like what oh, this is, what the item is. Or you can hit tap to recycle now. And when you hit that, it goes, okay, you're actually throwing it away this time. So we can differentiate between impressions and actual action. That's incredible data for companies. And I'm sure that will be... Uh very sought after as as, one can only hope. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I think you guys are going to build a treasure trove of, of data for companies that are starving for it because they need to report their, you know, extended producer responsibility, you know, progress. Mm -hmm. And especially now with this phase three, I just heard about or scope three, which to me is just mind-blowing but i think you you guys will fit right in with this this is going to be great 
scope three. So we do do like, I mean, my, my background is in carbon assessment, sustainability, so on and so forth. Scope three is really tricky. We do do a generic like CO2 assessment based on the EPA's warm model, yeah. but we do have the ability to store a brand's specific carbon footprint for their packaging. That's wow. a feature we're hoping to roll out pretty soon. So we can do those scope threes. All of this patent pending, by the way. So, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but basically, yeah, like yeah. calculating scope three is such a like a very specific issue, especially in sustainability. And but the main reason why we like chose to kind of go down this route is we actually want to work with this company called Smart Planet. One of our advisors advises them and us as well. Mm -hmm. They Smart Planet, it's actually really cool what they do. So you know how like PE layers on like for to like insulate card and paper from moisture for cartons and so on and so forth isn't it really messes with a lot of paper mills like right. it ruined our, our advisor's name is johnny gold if you're listening hi johnny hey, he, johnny. he, he got kind of knocked out of the business because he's like i kept getting contamination and ruining the quality of my paper so, so what smart planet does is they use a mineral based coating instead but the problem is is that you can't tell the difference between their mineral based coating that is perfectly recyclable no degradation perfect in any paper mill you can't tell the difference between that and a wax coated or a PE coated. Yeah. So if they were to put a symbol or a QR code that we could scan, we could directly identify which ones are coated properly and can be recycled and which ones aren't, even though it is indistinguishable to any human eye. Excellent. So that's kind of really the end goal of what we're going for is if you have any custom container drop-offs, special packaging, things that aren't obvious to the consumer, come see us. We can highlight it in the app and because people know, hey, when I'm confused, I scan this barcode, I scan this QR code, and Scrap tells me what to do. No matter how complicated your packaging is, we can tell them where to go, whether it's a drop-off, bottle deposit, plastic bag collection, et cetera. That's really the end goal. It's not just from home. It's from anywhere that we really want to highlight. And that's incredible. I, I'm so excited for that. And really, really kudos to you and your, your, your whole team. It's been a lot of sleepless nights, but thank I can you. say, yeah, you must be exhausted. One more question. Does it work for compostable packaging or do you feel like that kind of throws a, a loop in the whole thing? Yes, it does. We accommodate both home compostable and industrial compostable. So I'm actually an avid gardener, as you can tell by the yeah. for people watching. Yeah, I have a lot of plants behind me. <laughs> That's the reason the grow lights are there is I start my seeds early because in New England, we'll get 50 degree weather for a week and it's like, psych, that's false spring. And then we'll get <laughs> frost again. So I can't start like my basil, my oregano, yeah. all those fun, delicate crops. But nonetheless, I love to compost. I use worm bins. I use everything. So the first thing I said was, if people have compostable packaging, especially where we work with like zero waste stores and retailers as well to certify that they are a low waste store, they yeah. carry so much compostable packaging. So if it's compostable, if it's industrial compostable, we can accommodate that. No problem. And I know a lot of compost haulers uh, have that issue where it's like, it says it's compostable, but like, it's not turning in my process. If right. they contact us and tell us, Hey, here's our compost scheme. We're looking to accommodate that as well. So there's like a recycling guidance column, a composting guidance column. So now people can get like an all in one experience for anything waste. That's amazing. And it's so complicated. No wonder you need science to help you. No wonder you need an app to, to figure it out. You know, I get text messages all the time. Hey man, can I recycle this? What is this? You know, is this, where do I put this material or, or why did they use this material? You know? So it sounds like you guys are, are doing that for free. It's really yeah. cool. Cause honestly, it's just the right thing to do. Like yeah. recycling is a human right. It's not supposed to be complicated. It, whether there was nefarious or not by design, like how recycling ended up the way it did, whether it was the advent of single stream, People deserve to know where it goes in a simple and easy fashion. They should not have to go out of their way and go through countless websites, countless search tools to get a maybe. Like it, <laughs> it just needs to be that like, got it there, go. Yep. And the nice thing is, is like, if you have really special components, like if say you have a wireless router and modem that's like e-waste, e that's like really complicated, we got you covered. Like we, we wanted to make sure that oh. really complicated things and like, cause packaging engineering is like a beautiful thing. Like I've, I've spoken to Adam Peak before and I know like what you yeah. guys do with packaging design and all those things. Like they're a feat of engineering just as much as the aerospace components I did. They deserve to be highlighted, not as like, oh, hey, cool, it's off the shelf. Cool, like, it's a really hard thing to do to package something right. Absolutely. And it there. deserves to be highlighted and showed off. So yeah. that's kind of why, we, that's the nerdy reason why we do what we do is to marvel <laughs> at the cool packaging things that are going on. 
Yeah, Adam and I and Abelio Matos host uh, two weekly shows, one audio and one video. And we love talking about this stuff because it's so amazing. There's so many incredible people that are designing, implementing, uh, figuring out packaging for all the products that we interact with all day long. So it's, I agree with you hundred percent. It's such a cool industry. Yeah. And all my buddies love craft beer. It, like yeah. breweries, <laughs> small breweries are a huge thing in new England right now. Yeah. Like I'm sure it is as much in the United States as well, yeah, yeah. but they're like those cans, the design that goes into those cans, like sure. It's just a can, but like everybody loves the design of the cans. Like they take photos of them. It's like, a, it's such a cool thing. And I think packaging has the potential to be something like that. But when you do get really complicated things, people start to get confused and that's kind of where we step yeah. in. Absolutely. And if they get frustrated, it goes in the garbage and that's, it's a waste, literally. Literally. No, literally. Yeah. It's, it's a waste. It's a waste of someone's creativity. It's a waste of great material. And if I have one PSA for people besides please. download the app, please don't yeah. use glitter. Just don't yeah. use glitter. It ruins everything. Like don't I know glitter. it's beautiful. I know it looks shiny, grabs the eye. Don't use glitter. It ruins everybody's plastics, papers, metals. It ruins everybody's day. Please yeah. don't glitter. <laughs> that is a, that's a new one for the show, but I, I support you in that. Thank you. <laughs> I have a seven-year-old daughter who loves glitter and uh, trying to convince her that it's not a good idea. Uh, it's like but, sand at the beach. Like you don't know when you, you don't, <laughs> oh, I remember the last time you were at the beach, but it's still there and you don't know why. So <laughs> people who use glitter, now you know how packaging people feel like. Imagine right. having sand in your bag after two years in the beach. So <laughs> that's it. That's it. So uh, what's next? You guys, like you said, you just launched a couple of weeks ago, trialing in these states, and then mm -hmm. you, you expand slowly, or is it going to be like a shotgun approach? So basically we scale as fast as funding allows. So we actually just, so our basic company trajectory is we finished our crowdfunding round end of February. We crowdfunded about 107,000. And wow. then we are actually, I can't say yet, but we got a grant from a certain technology company to that our back end relies on so we can actually like pursue this with like a good amount of money as well Excellent. so basically our back end Congratulations. For, for the time being thank you it was, it was yeah. like uh, ev and i were on like it was like obviously he's in the uk it was like 2 a.m his time it was like yeah. 10 a.m my 10 p.m my time and <laughs> like he got the email and he was like yeah and i'm like what is someone hurt and he's like no we got it and i'm like wait we got it but basically what we plan to do right now is obviously like i mean i'm responsible for the uk's recycling guidance in the entire United States for second guidance. And I have Canada's for second guidance done. I just have to update it a little bit. So <laughs> I'm responsible for about, if there's 800 or 700 municipalities in the United Kingdom, there are 24,643 in the United <laughs> States. Uh, I am responsible for all of them. So if you want to be in the app, the faster I get the guidance, the more I can expand very quickly. So basically it's just, we're, fi we're five to eight people right now. I wow. can't cover an entire country by myself. So if we get the funding to have a team and like onboard guidance, develop things quicker, we yeah. could be, we could accommodate the entire country like really quickly. It's like, it's designed to be a really easy process to have everybody in the app. We didn't want to make this, we want to make it so a four-year-old could scan something and an eight-year-old could, could scan something. <laughs> you can click the app and click the scan button, scan the item in sub 10 seconds with a slow phone, with a fast phone. And if you're good and you, you grew up with cell phones, five seconds. You can open the app, hit the scan button, scan the item, get your results done. It's in the trash. It's speed is really what we prioritize with the app experience. So we really want to be in as many places as we can that we can oh, actually man. handle and service well. Well, good for you. And this is really exciting. And I hope this is the first of several appearances on this podcast, because I want to hear what happens in six months and what happens in a year. So will you come back and be on the show again? Absolutely. I All have right. someone to talk about packaging with my parents. So they, <laughs> as you can imagine, I'm quite yeah. chatty. Uh, I'm, I'm the scrap sales guy. I talk all the time. My dad, will, my dad's a factory guy. Like my dad's very stoic. Doesn't always chat. I got the chatty gene from my mom. I'll come out and I'd be like, I just had this really great call. Like at seven this morning, I got off the phone with a really great call with someone really, the Switzerland person, really influential 
really and i was super excited and i was telling my mom about it my dad's just holding the tv remote pointing at me and he goes pause <laughs> button ain't working on this one <laughs> trying to get me to shut up so it's and for this way if you'll have me I, I can talk all day about packaging and honestly just i love to just talk about like the engineering of packaging like it's almost like origami it's it's an art it's fun to talk about it because i did design and manufacturing of aerospace components so i truly appreciate a yeah. good design and a good drawing that draws up great schematics and such it really is an art form, and I, I appreciate that you know that. Well, I'd like to thank Lance for Aurora for sponsoring this podcast. Your continued support is very much appreciated. And if you're listening, please take a minute to subscribe and give us a rating. We, we appreciate that very much. Thank you so much, Mikey. Looking forward to having you back on. Of course. Thanks, Corey. Have a good one. You too.